Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 of the 7 Days to Die Survival Guide. Now before we move on, you might see that I have an abrasion, an infection and 2 hours of fatigue. And you'll notice that I have a lot less shotgun shells and a lot more loot. That is because I couldn't help myself and I decided to go on a night raid. I'm going to play the, the clip for you now and I'll let you decide if you think night raids are a good idea. I surprisingly survived. I came out pretty good, even though I'm here with a few injuries, but pretty much got off lightly, I would say. Um, it was pretty eventful. A lot higher level zombies spawned than I expected. Before I play the clip, though, I'm just going to say that I got a skill point during it, and I'm going to put that straight into Miner 69er. I want to unlock iron tools as soon as possible, so I'm going to go for that. But with that, guys, the clip of the night raid is now going to play, and when we come back, I will be, first of all, I will be the correct character and will be ready to start the episode normally. I'll see you guys on the other side of that. This is me on a night operation between day 2 and 3 in episode 2 and 3. Um, that in front of me is not a cooking pot, that is a landmine. I'm not 100% sure how to trigger it, but I do know to avoid it, so I'm just going to go around it. I'm giving you this warning so that you can use it in future. If you come into a POI and you see a cooking pot and you can't see the E to pick up button, it's a landmine. And you probably don't want to stand on that. The reason I'm doing this little night operation, by the way, while you're here, is because I want a wrench and I don't want to wait until, like, day four to find one. So I am taking my own advice from the 10 Mistake Beginners Make video and looting houses at night. I am not afraid of the zombies running at this stage in the game. That lady fell right down from the ceiling. I have to watch out for that in POIs, especially at night time. What the fuck? Oh! My right click's broken. It just keeps throwing it. Oh, I've summoned the horde. Okay. This is where the fun begins. Come on, you motherfuckers. Good fun. This is what I live for in Seven Days to Die. Falling down random traps and forgetting to reload my shotgun at night and all that good stuff. So, if that doesn't encourage you to go exploring at night, I don't know what will. Good thing I was recording. But yeah, if you're if you're gonna go raiding out at night like uh, your old uncle pre-built, 
definitely be cautious. Now, I chose to fight that horde. I did not have to at all. I could have just ran upstairs, jumped out the window and went and ran away before they got me, but I wanted the XP and we did get a level. I'll put that into something in the morning. Um, yeah, let's continue looting this house then. I mean, it can't get much scarier than that, can it? Oh, game stop. There's a spider zombie in there. Game, you're killing me. I really am getting my ass kicked. Have I got a painkiller? I do, I'll take that. That'll just give me loads of health back. Like I said, can't get much scarier than that. Come on, where are you? Oh god. Oh, that guy just wouldn't die. Anyway, I suffered an abrasion. To cure that, you just want to take a first aid bandage, like so, and there you go. You'll still have it, but it's not that bad of a disease. Uh, sorry, illness to have. Oh, it's the door. Always keep your secondary weapons repaired, guys. Come on, crawler. Let's try and loot this again, then. I don't know why I'm getting such high-level zombies on this low difficulty at a low game stage. But I'm not complaining. I like the challenge. Ah, we got one, finally. Wrench. Kind of broken, but it'll do. So we can use that on some cars to get some useful things later in episode three. Now, just because your uncle pre-built went on a night raid, does that does not mean that you should try this at home, especially if you're on a higher difficulty than I am. I'm not going to bother with that desk safe because it's not going to give me anything good. And it's a waste of time. Oh, clothes. What do we got? What do we got? More cowboy boots. Let's go. A lot of cowboys in this town. And some running shoes. Running shoes. Ah, I thought those were the ones that give you the speed boost. They are not. Coffee bean recipe. I'll read that at the start of the next episode. Steroids. So, steroids give you... Basically your entire inventory capacity. They also give you 10% more running speed, but they do take 30 points more. I don't care, I'm just going to use them. And it gives you it for 10 minutes. Nice and fast during the night. Never want to be too slowed down at night, after all, given the zombies can now run at this time. Come on. See? People use weapons that aren't the sledgehammer. I don't get it. I have to be careful not to fall on. That was a landmine. <laughs> Come on. So I should explain why I kind of panicked there. The Hawaiian zombie makes that burpy sound. And the reason I shat myself when that happened is because that is the same sound effect the cops make, and... Given how the game has been... ...behaving... ...with regards to... Come on, then. Ah! Don't make that mistake twice, come on. I'd, this was supposed to encourage you to do night raids. <laughs> right then. Let's see, have I got any honey on me? No. I also have fatigue, but that's relatively easy to solve later. I'm going to take another bandage. Completely wasting these. But let's just keep looting this house, God damn it! Also, it's almost daytime. I'm just going to detonate this landmine. So I'm going to show you guys how to dispose of these. 
just like that. Don't do it when you're next to it, obviously, but now I won't fall on that for the third time. Let's keep going. So yeah, always be aware of what's above, but it was kind of hard to check that there. So here's the final loot. Let's see what we got. What did we risk it all for? Shit, shit. Let's check the chest. Ah, metal helmet. Will I use one? I think I'm going to wear this metal helmet. Reason being, I want to put that light on it so you guys can see better. So now if I hold F, that goes on. See? Oh no, I just have to tap F, sorry. I'm thinking of a different mechanic. I'm going to take this blunderbuss to sell, I'm going to scrap those, take those, sell that, sell that, mm, scrap that, take that. We have another shotgun messiah crate here, what did we get inside? Ooh. Scrap these, modification there, go ahead and put this on, not that apparently. <laughs> Put this. What's this for? Uh, I'll just sell it. I don't remember what that's for. And we've got some food. Always good to have, have food. Let's take that as well. Welcome back, guys. I hope you enjoyed that little night raid segment. Today's video is going to be dedicated to the forge, and we're also going to try and get a workbench and maybe try and even get the start of a mini bike. I have everything I need in my inventory to make a forge. You can see if you come over here and type in forge, you will see that you need 50 stone, 60 clay soil, 10 leather, 3 duct tape, and 3 short iron pipes. You need to unlock this using the forge schematic or advanced engineering. I have gone for advanced engineering, so hopefully you guys will have at least found the forge schematic or followed the same path as me. So. As you can see here, it says it's used to smelt metals to craft tools and weapons or stone to craft cement. Unlock more recipes through perks, install tools to increase performance or upgrade recipes. Uh, unlock recipes, sorry. So you can see it's going to take a minute and 20 seconds to craft. Some of the more advanced crafting stations really do have a long time to craft in this game. For example, I think the chemistry station has something like a 19 minute crafting time? 13 minutes. So yeah, they, they can get pretty... Uh, time consuming to craft. So what we're going to do while we wait for our forge to craft is we're going to take a walk to the traders. I want to find out if he has... Oh, frame rate hello. I want to find out if our trader has some vitamins to cure my fatigue. I'm still not the right character. That is annoying as hell. Hopefully that'll be fixed next time. Anyway, fatigue, as you can see, your fatigue and take 10% more damage from all attacks. Eat, vi eat vitamins to cure this and your max health is lowered by 18.8 .8 for 2 hours. We definitely need to find some vitamins very quickly. Now I've got my wrench here. I found that in the raid last night. Hopefully that was on the clip there. I'm just going to go back to the house here and I'm going to check if we have any repair kits because that's going to annoy me if we do not. Let's see. It looks like we don't have any repair kits. Oh, unfortunate. Well, we need to get our hands on a repair kit today then, because this wrench isn't going to last for very long. But when you have a wrench, this is the only safe way to dispose of cars. That and the upgraded version of the wrench, which is the ratchet, and the upgraded version of that, which is the impact driver. But those are much later in the game. Right now, you just want to hold left click on the car. This animation will start playing. When the wrench does this sort of sideways animation, that means it's using... You're using the correct tool on the object. If it's just doing that, you're using it on the wrong thing. So you're seeing here that we're getting some gasoline, we're getting mechanical parts, we're getting iron, we're getting oil, we're getting scrap polymers, we're getting headlights. Cars give you a huge amount of things. We get springs as well. What we really want, though, is an engine. I don't think we could have got an engine from that particular car anyway. I think it's a certain level of car will only have it. Um, and I think it needs to be slightly higher health than that car was. It needs to have more of its body intact, if I'm not mistaken. But it's always a good idea to just scrap cars anyway, because you'll want the pipes, springs, headlights, all that kind of thing, because they are a very useful thing. Oh! In the mailbox, just outside the traders here, we found the basics of electricity schematics. We can now craft electri excuse me, electrical generator banks, ceiling lights, and relays by reading this. And that's just lying here. Okay. 
So yeah, we're going to head into the trader. We want to buy some vitamins from him because I did that night raid and got my arse kicked. I'm going to take another job from him, see if he's got any really close by. He's got buried supplies a few hundred meters to the... I'm going to take this one here. 169 northeast. The reason I'm taking this is because I want to clear PY anyway to find some vitamins and just generally find more loot. But we're going to go back to the house first. And I'm going to show you guys how to use the forge. Then we're going to head out and do the clear zombies at what seems to be that exact same POI. If it is the same POI, I will just skip that for you. I don't want to show you the same POI two episodes in a row. So, yeah. Let's go see how to use the forge. So here we are in the forge interface. You can see we have a crafting menu on the left. This is everything you can make in the forge. Remember that you have to filter it because there is no all filter for this. You can see that we can make just basic resources like iron, uh, forged iron. We can make blocks like iron stairs. I've never built a block out of here except for rebar frames, which I think are stored somewhere else. We can make basically everything you would ever need to make ammunition, except for the gunpowder. And we have all of these tools slash traps here. These are glass blocks that break when you stand in them, and these are items for the forge. So like the campfire, we need to put some fuel in. I'm going to put a lot of fuel in. Actually, I'm going to take a bit out because we don't have that much to smelt just now. I'm going to put all my iron in here and then I'm going to run downstairs. And I'm going to grab all my clay, which is here. The reason we want all that clay is because you need clay and forged iron to make... Um, no, sorry, you need clay and scrap iron to make forged iron. So we're going to dump this in here and we're going to turn it on. So you'll see that it starts smelting down these pieces of iron and these pieces of clay simultaneously and it goes into this smelting list here. This is representative of all the resources that are inside the forge. If we come over here, you can see some things are starting to be unlocked, like our first piece of forged iron. Forged iron requires 12 iron and 6 clay, but that might be wrong because, if I recall correctly, some ranks of advanced engineering make it cheaper. We can craft glue cheaper, but that's not it. Okay, so we're not getting any discounts on that yet, so this is how much this actually costs. So I'm going to just tell it to make a couple, and we'll come back when it's finished smelting all that in probably about two minutes. Um, this is a brass radiator. I want to put that in there because it will give you a decent amount of brass. I'm just going to stick it in the output here. It can temporarily store that there. So, we need to get our hands on iron. A decent amount of it. But first, I'm going to go run and do this mission here. I'm not sure if I've shown this before, but this is dropped loot. Zombies have a small chance of dropping one of these bags. I'm just going to open it and we'll see. we got some pipe bombs. This would be a good opportunity to explain how those work. And we got some food. I'll take that. So, pipe bombs are one of the earliest explosive weapons available in Seven Days to Die. Um, Molotov cocktails are probably available slightly earlier. Let's just get all these zombies to come and attack us. And then we'll throw a grenade at them here. So pipe bombs don't do the most damage in the universe, they do 230 damage, it's probably enough to do, to kill a zombie if it lands very close to the centre of the radius. Sorry, if the zombie is close to the centre of the radius. Now, you might be inclined to simply left click and throw, so what, I just fucked up recording that, so I'm going to say it again. <laughs> um, you press right click, and then you hold left click, and then you throw it. Oh, no, I did. Ah, uh, fuck. So I killed her with that grenade. Who gives a fuck? But what happened there is I left the radius of the POI, so I failed the quest there. So that is unfortunate, but at least I did teach you guys about explosives and also drop loot. I'm going to come in and kill this guy anyway. Okay, so we found our first gun schematic. This is a schematic for a 44 Magnum. This means if I was able to find all the parts for it, I would be able to craft it. We also got the mini bike handlebar schematic. I'm actually going to sell that instead of reading it for the 50 XP. Take this ammo, take, scrap those, uh, scrap that. This is scrap chest armor. It's pretty good, but I don't like heavy armor right now. It slows me down too much, so I'm just going to not bother with that. While I was in there, by the way, I found, where is it? Mineral water, pure mineral water. This gives you a huge boost in water. Compare this to the default water, which gives you 20. This gives you 60. It also gives you plus 15% stamina regen, which is the same as water. It also gives you cure dysentery 20%, which is the same as the goldenrod tea. It also gives you efficient digestion, which is an effect I'm going to explain right now. If we come over to the character menu and look for... where is it? 
efficient digestion, you'll see that food and water cost of regenerating stamina is negative 15%. So basically, whenever you use stamina in this game, you use food and water. This reduces the amount of food and water you use when the stamina is regenerating by 15%. Basically meaning that your hunger and water degrade 15% slower, for all intents and purposes. So let's go. Okay, we just got an engine, let's go. The engine was the really rare part of the minibike, if you recall, and we just got one out of this random car here. I think once we have a workbench then, there will be basically nothing standing in our way of getting a minibike aside from acid for the tires and coal. So we'll definitely need to get our hands on some coal, which should be fairly easy, but the acid is going to be a job for next episode. I think I'm going to cut off the episode here on my way back to the traders now that we have that engine. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for watching and the support on this series, it's really encouraging and this is a really fun series for me to record and edit surprisingly. It's not a very finicky thing to edit unlike my other videos. Um, if you enjoyed, please subscribe and leave a like. I'd also like to just come in here really quickly and remind you guys that I have a Twitter account for the channel. The reason I have a Twitter account is actually because, if you don't know, there is a feature available to YouTubers at 1000 subscribers called the Community Page, which allows you to use polls and interact with the community much easier than your average comment section. Obviously though, unless you're watching this a couple of years in the future, I do not have 1,000 subscribers. So, if you guys want to be involved in votes or any general community discussion, the place to do it is Twitter. It is... my handle is at well, is... Do, oh, Bob, come on, shut up, man. My handle is at is prebuilt YT. That's at is prebuilt YT. There will be a link in the comments and the description. Please go over there and follow if you watch the end of this today's video. It's so helpful and I, once I have enough followers I'll be able to start interacting with you guys on a much more detailed level like polls for videos and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I'll see you guys in episode 4.